Hey guys, welcome back to Rudder Innovations, where today we're going to be changing out the water pump on this outboard engine. Here we go. First mark the position of the trim tab by drawing a line on the trim tab and lower unit. Next, we'll move this cap on the top just by prying it up. There is a 12 millimeter bolt down inside there. All right, now that we have that removed, if you look underneath, you'll see another 12 millimeter bolt right here that we'll need to remove. All right, there's four 14 millimeter bolts. There's two on this side and there's two on this side. The last bolts that hold the lower unit on. We're gonna remove three of them and loosen one slowly as we catch the lower unit. Okay, on this back side, you'll see there's a little notch right here. You can put a wedge in in order to try and pry this thing loose. Right now I have all the bolts loose and it's still pretty seized on there. All right, wedging my flathead in there was the only thing it needed just to break it loose. Be careful when you're dropping it down. You also want to remove this water pickup line right here. Now we'll go ahead and loosen this bolt as we're holding it and we'll lower it all the way out. To have a place to work on your lower unit, you can just get a couple saw horses with a couple pieces of wood that'll slip underneath the slip, clamp them together so they can't slide out, and then it'll be secure while you work on the water pump. All right, there's four 12 millimeter bolts that hold this plastic housing on, so we'll go ahead and take those off now. You can see that there are two longer bolts and two shorter bolts for obvious reasons. Shorter ones go here, longer ones go here. I'm gonna slide this housing up and you can see already why this water pump is not working anymore. The fins are all broken off. So gotta get this replaced for sure. If your impeller is broken like mine, make sure to remove all the damaged pieces. All right, now I'm gonna wedge this flathead screwdriver underneath the impeller and we're gonna just pry it up. In 17 years, this engine has never been serviced, so hopefully your water pump parts won't be as hard to remove as mine. During this process, I used gradually larger tools and eventually a two by four to brace my flathead on for leverage as I pried the impeller up the shaft. There we go, we've got it slid all the way off. It's slotted all the way over the top of the spline. And there's our impeller. All right, now we can go ahead and take this gasket off. Next, just find a spot that's a little sticking out a little bit for this plate and you can push up on it, set it like a flathead to start breaking the seal. Once you have that loose, we're gonna have to slide this key out of here. I have a one eighth inch punch that I'm gonna use to hit this key with. I'm gonna hit the top of it. Just keep hitting it until it goes all the way, rotates out. Now that we have our key out of the slot, we can take off this plate and the gasket that's stuck to it underneath. And you can see, notice the orientation of this, that's it's kind of sloped downwards. Whenever you put your new plate in, you want it to be the same way. We'll slide this all the way off of the shaft now. All right, I did separate this gasket just so you can see the orientation of it. To remove the lower pump housing, I used large blunt screwdrivers so as not to scratch or damage the lower unit. And this plate is gonna come up a little by little. You can see I have two wedged on that side. I'm gonna wedge two on this side. And I'm slowly gonna work it up. And what you can do is you can put the screwdriver on top of the gasket so that you're not scratching the surface on the lower unit. So I'm gonna hammer this in and work it up slowly. All right, I got a big pry bar on this side and I have a big fat screwdriver on this side. What I'm doing is I'm holding weight down on the pry bar 
and on this big flat head and I'm rotating this while I'm holding pressure going up. There you go. On the top water cover housing, which is plastic, you'll see this little metal cylinder, which you should be able to slide out of there. And then you can look and see if there's any damage on the top of the housing, which in this instance, there is. You can see that the plastic has been melted a little bit. You can kind of see it better on this side. So we're gonna replace this housing as well. This might also be a good time to check out this seal and you can see that there's a crack in it right here. So we're gonna replace this as well and clean up all of that. All right, so here's our old one. You can see that there's a, a crack right there. Here's our new one. And along with that, this is a plate, which looks like this. Uh, that's all kind of corroded, messed up. We're gonna knock this thing out of here. We'll put the new seat in there and then we'll install the new piece. All right, got everything cleaned up. We can start to reassemble everything. All right, here's a water pump repair kit that I got from boats.net, super cheap. I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff installed. All right, here's the old bottom end of our water pump and here is the new one. We're gonna have to put our new pieces on here. We also need to put our bearing seals on here. And if you look on this one, they go down into it this way and you can see the springs on the backside. So both of them go in the same direction facing down. So we'll get those pressed in. All right, I'm gonna take my gear case lube and I'm gonna lube up this. I'm also going to put some lubrication around the oil seal itself and then we'll press it in. And this is a 27 millimeter socket which fits perfect inside of this housing. The original water pump lower housing did not come with this retainer ring, but the new kit did, so make sure and install it before putting it back on the lower unit. Our water pump repair kit also came with the O-ring that goes around this lip right here, so we'll get that on and we'll lube it up with some gear oil. Next, you wanna lube up the inside of the oil seals before you slide on so that it slides easily over that shaft without popping the springs off of the oil seal. Now we have that lubed up and the outside of this, we'll go ahead and slide it on. Get this shaft nice and lubricated. I'm gonna go ahead and lube this up too, just so it makes it easy for those oil seals to slip over. I'm also gonna put oil on the outside of here, just to help it all slide in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this gasket over this O-ring. Slide this thing down the shaft. Careful not to force it. Pop one of those springs out the oil seal, just Try and turn it back and forth, slowly working its way down. Next, we'll slide on our gasket. Notice that the fins are pointing down, they're scooping down into the cavity there. Next, we'll slide down our gasket where our impeller is going to be. Next, we're going to hammer our woodruff key in. You want to make sure that the woodruff key is parallel and hammered all the way in with the shaft itself and it might help to take this off while you hammer it in so you don't damage that and now we can slide our impeller in the impeller has got a slot on it on the bottom but not on the top so you know which side is the top and the bottom and i'm going to just take some marine wheel bearing grease you can get yamaha if you want or some other brand and we're just going to lube up this and the shaft where it's going, and then we'll slide it down on top of it. it. Helps if you hold your finger on the fin that's got the slot for the key, so you know where it is when you slide it down on top. Getting the impeller down over the splines is not an easy task, and I use a lot of force to be able to get this thing down over this, so just be prepared. 
All right, we got our cup next, and I put a little bit of grease around here just to help the impeller fit in, so we'll slide that down now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the shaft clockwise. There we go. Couple more. There we go. You can just help them as you slide that cup down. All right. All right, I made the mistake of not ordering the new pins to come with my new device. So I'm using my Dremel tool with the cutting disc just to cut. I'm gonna try and punch the side off of this with a hammer. All right, we're able to get that punched out. You can see the whole pin now. I'm just gonna stick something in there, pry it up. See if we can get this thing out of here. What we're gonna do is we're going to have a new pump housing. Here's a new sleeve right here. And then we're gonna screw this original piece back into it. All right, up here, you can see this little tab and this tab lines up right here on the housing. So when we slide this thing over, we wanna make sure that that is lined up with this. Just slide it over the top to where it's lined up with that just like that, and we'll go ahead and get those bolts started. Two shorter bolts started on the lower side. We'll get the longer bolts lined up on the top side. Use our 12 millimeter socket to tighten all these down. Didn't see any torque spec for these bolts, but the pump housing is plastic, so don't over tighten it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the lower unit to be installed back onto the rest of the motor. I'm gonna put grease both on the gear shifting splines and up here on the shafts, drive shaft splines. All right, just looking at the top of the unit, this is where the gear shift is gonna connect right here. We're gonna put some lube right around there, even though we still have some on the splines. This is gonna plug in to where our water pump is, where that screw, top part screwed in. Once we have it situated, you can hold it with your leg to get it threaded in. That'll hold it in place. All right, now you get the rest of them in there. Don't forget to put your bolt up through the bottom. From what I can find, the torque specs for the trim tab on this Yamaha 90 is 26 foot-pounds of torque, and the other bolts are 29 foot-pounds. All right, we'll go ahead and set our trim tab. We'll line up our mark where, that we set right here on the trim tab. So we know that's lined up correctly. Lastly, we'll put this cap back on. You also don't want to forget to reconnect this hose here slide that zip tie back over when you test it if you're not in the water you want to flush the motor using the muff type connection at the bottom of the lower unit to make sure water is being pulled through the water pump if you use a flush connection on the upper unit where you can connect it to a hose that is going to bypass your water pump so it will not be an effective test to make sure that it's working properly if your engine has water coming out of what we call the pee hole then you know it's working right all right all right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you like this video, like it. If you're watching it on Medium, you can subscribe. Feel free to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace and God bless.